I should like to be brief and really we are glad to have be attended and participated by the presence of the embassy who uh, encouraged us and who ordered to make this uh, project and uh, and great versatility of uh, studies uh, media and other type of studies for us it was a real challenge because proceeding from the topic itself uh, we have to and shall have to deal with uh, different fields different uh, specialities and really i'm glad that we have succeeded and our uh, researchers uh, have found themselves at their best uh, and for georgia it's very significant very important uh, for our political parties and for our community our society and so one of the the former elections, the party leaders, they signed the special project and they just agreed that they, while these forthcoming elections, they won't use aggressive language, they won't assault each other, no negative campaigns will take place and uh, so on. Everything will be of, uh, according to politeness, ethics uh, and uh, uh, grace uh, and dignity. Nothing would be insulted. Uh, and uh, of course, really, there was a very interesting situation because uh, this agreement was pretty promising and our goal was uh, uh, to uh, evaluate uh, this agreement and not only agreement but to relate the implementation of this agreement uh, and uh, we uh, were pursuing goal to evaluate uh, within the frame of this um, report in so far political parties uh, were able and succeeded to act in keeping and to carry out uh, uh, these um, promises and this agreement and uh, uh, so later the authors themselves will shed light their own various peculiarities once again i should like to say thanks to the authors uh, it's a sort of joint work uh, joint venture and it's um, an effort uh, to uh, just uh, encourage and uh, uh, to act in keeping with our promises uh, made to our electorate uh, and uh, uh, both while uh, uh, general elections while local elections uh, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, document uh, that document which was signed it was a sort of a benchmark uh, and uh, um, of course even uh, within the context of the forthcoming future elections uh, it will be very very interesting very significant uh, in order to encourage and uh, to foster our parties uh, to be electorate oriented to be oriented on the demands and wishes of our electors uh, our voters and uh, to just stress and to manifest completely that Georgian electorate, electorate of Georgia, Georgia voters, uh, they really must be respected and they deserve much more than sometimes they have. And now I would like with great pleasure to give floor to Mr. Armin Razor, who is the uh, advisor in the issues and field of humanity. Uh, Mr. Razor, the floor is yours. Uh, you are welcome with your speech. Good afternoon. Thank you very much um, to GIP uh, for organizing this event. And uh, we are glad that it found the interest of uh, all of you who are uh, present uh, now here. Um, after your introductory words, maybe let, let me just add a few words about our engagement, our motivation, why we've supported uh, this process. Switzerland is committed to support stability, democracy, and prosperity in Georgia. And elections are key to democracy. But uh, at the same time, worldwide experience also shows that elections can potentially lead to, to crisis. 
depending on how political parties conduct themselves, they can either fuel the crisis or they can help to, to resolve it. The engagement of political parties um, around ethical principles and the respect of these principles help to strengthen uh, democratic debate, the culture of political tolerance and dialogue, and thus prevent uh, political crises and tensions. Um, all stakeholders in society, including voters, can monitor political uh, subjects. Switzerland supported processes around ethical principles um, and code of conduct in uh, several countries. And together with IDEA, um, we also published a guide on dialogues on voluntary codes of conduct for political parties. And in, in Georgia, uh, we've supported, together with our partner IRI, the Central Election Commission, as the competent state body to facilitate negotiations on the code of conduct for political parties. The 40 political parties um, and electoral subjects which signed the code of conduct document made, I think, uh, an, an important uh, step of course, strengthening, strengthening the political culture and democracy doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen with a signature alone. It needs constant efforts over long periods and well established old democ democracies that's needed. Um, Switzerland supported GIP to monitor the implementation of the code of conduct to make sure challenges are identified and opportunities for progress are explored. This type of monitoring supports a systemic approach to anchor the code of conduct in Georgia's political culture in a, in a longer uh, perspective. Um, we consider it important that any code of conduct process is nationally owned and as inclusive as, as possible. Political parties are the owners of the principles they have subscribed to, and the election commission is the national body which has facilitated the process. Therefore, we just would like to thank for the cooperation and for the trust um, of all involved uh, partners, particularly to the Central Election Commission and to IRI. Now we, we are looking forward to the research findings and the recommendations and uh, to your discussions on, on possible ways forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mr. Reiser, uh, for the speech. And uh, I should like uh, to give floor to our uh, moderator, Lavan. I think sure that Lavan is well known to everybody. He's uh, executive director and proceeding from evaluation issue. No, he, you know, he's very rigorous. He's a very, very zealous worker and maybe the best moderator or at least one of the best moderators dealing with this issue. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kornakachia. My greetings to our Mr. Reisner, dear sir, Adam Reisner. Uh, and um, uh, greetings to all participants, uh, listeners, uh, and really I'm glad to be moderator of this very significant discussion. And uh, really I'm also very, very uh, content and satisfied uh, by the tradition, tradition of cooperation. Uh, really, we always uh, are interested uh, in, with the work and results of the studies of the Institute of Politics, which uh, carries out, is carried out uh, in Georgia, in various other countries, but especially in Georgia, especially dealing with uh, uh, democratic uh, support of democratic movement of uh, political parties, and uh, also uh, concerning and dealing with the inauguration of new political initiatives. That uh, we are grateful to that very, very important work, and thanks to your partners uh, who permanently help you. And I, uh, being moderator, I won't take your time, just I only, only stress one thing that the code of behavior is crucially important.
important uh, within the community. It's, uh, it's imperative. Why? Because it plays the role of democratic imperative. It must be retained. It must be invulnerable, adamant, and it makes uh, a very positive field, a very positive environment for uh, political parties. Uh, and politically, this environment becomes more gradually more predictable. And uh, of course, uh, it has very, very big importance. It's very important. And besides, it's very important uh, that in various countries, uh, uh, violence, uh, uh, controversies, uh, and turmoil, civic turmoil, frequently deals with uh, the connected with the post-electoral process and post-electoral times and this internal controversies, internal friction and clashes, they deal with or are interconnected with the political crisis and these uh, code, these values, this behavior, ethics, political ethics, it has very important role of Lever, lever, which um, stabilizes the situation, which streamlines situation, turns uh, positive into positive, uh, calm, tranquil political battle. And I think that it's a sort of indicator what takes place in reality and which party is interested just and it's only is wants to gobble, gobble power which is a sort of uh, gluttony for power, and which one is interested more in development of democracy, in making of political balance, in improvement and refining of political culture, etc. So one wants to grab power and nothing more, another wants to set up positive democratic environment, where refined political culture, improvement and ability and aptitude to discuss, uh, to avoid violations and so on. So we will be faced by very promising discussion and let me take to our presenters, speakers, very interesting set of uh, uh, researchers, Salome Abkhazishvili, the first uh, media uh, researcher. Salome, you have six minutes, and please, I shall be very hard, very strict time limits uh, observer, because sometimes such meetings are turned into incessant and uh, endless ones. Thank you very much. Um, thanks to all, everybody who attends, who is attending this meeting, and for me, really, is an uh, uh, enormous uh, success, and enormous privilege and honor to work with you within the Georgian Institute of uh, uh, Politics and in order to fill pulsation. No, no, these are not just only rhetorics and empty words. It's just really very interesting that we will forward, we look forward to the results. And my friends, my colleagues will speak about very, uh, that very piece, those very pieces who are full of appetite. I shall speak about you with the context, uh, how we started this work. Uh, pandemic disease, uh, coronavirus, uh, it's an uh, enormously difficult um, obstacle. It was difficult even to participate for everybody, for subjects to communicate uh, you know, their voters in this in extraordinary, very difficult situation and of course uh, there were difficulties and obstacles dealing with uh, um, clearness, uh, dealing with uh, uh, some other things and the uh, uh, system was changed, was uh, modified and it gave us very good, uh, profound, fundamental reason for to make uh, more, uh, more, more, how to say, uh, attentive uh, uh, attitude and attention, and uh, it was very, very interesting. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Kakachi told you very well about goal which we pursued uh, in so far, uh, the principles which were you know, written down within this uh, code, how they had been And we 
covered by our monitoring media sources. And we just describe such occasions, such cases when concrete media sources violated this behavior, violated ethics, and then we highlight these violations, we describe them, we qualify them, and make our evaluation side part of that the 10 days were at our disposal. I think that we really gathered a lot of pretty sufficient amount of facts of the violation by the side, from the side of political parties. And so fortunately, fortunately, the majority acted properly, but at the same time, a month of this violation, uh, though it deals with, uh, you see, uh, deals with the time limits allocated to uh, parties uh, and speakers. Uh, some parties, they're privileged, they have enormously durable time limits and vice versa, and others, uh, vice versa, others select this uh, uh, time and their time limits are restricted. Uh, for instance, uh, and the majority of these violations dealt with and uh, were, how to say, gained in inverted commas by uh, national uh, movement uh, and maybe European Georgia. Uh, you see, uh, what what was uh, the main uh, field? Uh, opposition violated uh, against uh, Georgian dream, Georgian dream against uh, opposition. Solomon, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so, yes, yes. 70% uh, of violations were committed against Georgian dream. On its own side, the Georgian dream uh, committed violations against uh, national movement uh, so uh, the actually violations actually did not take place against uh, how to say petty political rivals petty political parties uh, yeah, so and we were very very attentive very careful and i want to say that uh, in these political parties uh, and so, yes, um, men, 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 they violated more rather than women. Women were more, uh, how to say, committed to law and order and uh, uh, values. Uh, so, and uh, there was one uh, tendency uh, party and the new faces which appeared, uh, appeared during this uh, uh, period, uh, maybe they were were in top 10 or top 20 from their side there was no there was no uh, violation now contents yes really really uh, it's nice notice that uh, uh, the harsh language uh, language of hatred appealed to violation uh, never actually did not took uh, uh, place uh, it's nice, but uh, something sometimes uh, took place. Other monitors and other monitoring organizations took place uh, sometimes uh, uh, monitored uh, and noticed these uh, uh, violations. For instance, sometimes uh, you say no. opponent, yes, was personally insulted, but nothing more. And frequently took place that such kind of fact that uh, ruling party and opposition they uh, accused each other in one and the same violation or in one and the same wrongdoing. For instance, uh, you, you ruling party, you cooperate to criminal world, to and vice versa. You opposition, you cooperate to criminal world. And frequently, they also convict each other in criminal activity. Sometimes, uh, 
sometimes and frequently uh, when they accused each other in criminal activity, there was no proof. There was no just uh, no witness, no proof, and so on. These were just only rhetoric and reality gap, nothing more. And such speeches, such um, such uh, accusations, uh, they also were connected uh, by uh, with uh, private personal uh, personal insult uh, and uh, there was such an impression that uh, it was a part of their narration yes so but uh, this did not take place frequently so yes we may say that mm. according uh, to our well, according to our um, just evaluation, uh, these insults, of course, and these accusations, they encourage polarizing, and even more, uh, they frustrated, they disappointed uh, electorate voters, and uh, for voters, it was difficult to, to make clear picture of political situation, of political slogans, values, and so on. So actually, this was, in a nutshell, what I uh, wanted to tell you. And uh, uh, if you have questions, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna. Yes, it was very interesting uh, to have to inform us uh, by these uh, results. Uh, and it's nice to hear uh, that, for instance, the personal invectives or uh, appeal to violation really uh, decreased. Although it's pity to hear that there were personal, private insults, uh, uh, some demonstration of hatred. Uh, and uh, uh, you see, it's interesting, interesting that hi, hi, how, how they invented such a uh, term uh, that uh, uh, Your hatred, how you signed joint document, and how you have converted into friends. Their electorate cannot understand this. Maybe you will explain us again six, seven minutes or more. Thank you very much. Hopes are expressed. Yes, hopes are expressed that uh, I'm heard. Yes. Yes, and you see. Democratic Mojraukas. Mm. 
de police propre de ces trois speeches. شدره بیت اتفاقا ده. ولی زمیت خاصیت بودن. سعی نبری وی آن پوند ناتی نبری وی سعی نبری وی کاموش لبید. 20 درصدی کاموش لبید ناتی نبری سعی Čiže dá chodiť samozrejme dva procenty. So if there is a chance that we, we, we could not uh, notice all, all violations which were committed by the political party, the next and the aftermath, we did not, did not analyze uh, all speeches and all the announcements made by parties in aftermath. And uh, nobody, of course, did not relate in so far, was it groundless or there was a certain ground and it was proper. And yet, while certification, we see there is a very, very broad field for interpreting, case for interpreting and for this monitoring, we had very active communication. And also we uh, had just at random, incidentally, we selected incidentally at random 30, 30 uh, species, 30 yes, uh, persons and 30 parties. And uh, media is not passive, passive actor. Why? You see, format, format really stipulates everything in so far and how party comes in this uh, scope. And then uh, registration, interviews, we interviewed 17 times uh, in pro electoral period. Uh, it was in late December and early uh, January. And we wanted to clarify in so far to what extent uh, parties uh, uh, carried out their promises and hold themselves uh, upon their words. Uh, uh, so, um, and first of all, first of all, 
we should like to say that electron formation is very crucial, important, uh, uh, negative uh, thing. Uh, for instance, uh, and uh, for instance, uh, uh, not everybody knew that uh, uh, this party, participated party, was the made its signature. Uh, in two parties, they did not know content that said, and while interview, we informed them, and two parties said they did not, did not uh, sign with the code of behavior at all. So, uh, also, uh, they uh, promised and they had obligation uh, to inform leaders, uh, but it uh, was not systemic and uh, uh, for instance uh, they said that just only we uh, verbally informed them uh, we made them in this made them in the swim and so on so it was not systemic uh, and uh, uh, of course they even couldn't explain what they imply under violation uh, how party uh, would have uh, would um, just uh, react on this and finally we may say that it was very, very problematic. It was, there was problems on the way of implementation of this thought. And what is the escape from this bottleneck? Party said that the will, political will of political party, of ruling party itself, and it's necessary in their opinion uh, to involve uh, uh, media sources more and more in this process. Thank you, Gibi. It's very, very, very interesting. And uh, uh, we must think about, uh, yes, yes, uh, it's very intriguing. Uh, I am not author uh, and uh, uh, maybe I am not very delicate. Uh, uh, maybe and what we have had finally that during during pre 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 electoral period during pre electoral period they bombard us with a bullshit it's bullshit it's only uh, just uh, uh, insults it's only three letter words words uh, and so on and it's, it's a very it's catastrophe it's catastrophic result against these background sounds very strange that political parties, uh, they recommend and say that political culture must be changed. I'm sure, in my opinion, political parties must change themselves. They must change their attitude uh, towards electorate. They must change their political, political ethics, uh, their values, and this polarization the insults, convictions towards each other, and well, politicians, they easily, they find ways uh, towards each other and ties easily. It's part of politics in Georgia. And uh, I think on local level, it causes and stipulates harsh controversies, very durable, controversies. I think this code of behavior, it's a sort of entourage for politicians. They use it as a sort of uh, black tie, but not, on, not while their internal activity within the community, while acting towards each other, towards grassroots, and so on, to their opponents, and so on. They try to uh, use it as a tool for face lifting. One technical issue, this report, it's on the website. You can see it, you can read it. Problem, problems uh, which were caused by technology, they already have been overcome. And uh, then after discussion, while discussion, uh, we shall Lusher. And now, final, final speaker in this panel, Nino Samsaraz, the floor is yours. You have six, maximum seven minutes as the rest of our speakers. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, everybody. 
hears me and if everybody hears me. Uh, I shall take to uh, summarizing uh, and the very interesting part which was participated and uh, 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 every participant, every actor had hand in this final set. From the point of view of finalization of summarizing uh, and so our contents, once again, it's proved that the code of behavior on this uh, uh, stage, uh, um, this stage, uh, uh, really did not uh, cause fundamental change in political ethics of our political parties and their members. Uh, I won't take your time because colleagues already told you this. I shall take directly to recommendations and uh, I think that uh, maybe they must be unequivocally taken into account. And Lavan mentioned here uh, that uh, uh, this uh, document, uh, this document would not be just black tie, face lifting. We must set forth and uh, push forward on advanced position its content and its implementation. Yes, uh, uh, you know, to carry out it. So political parties must do it. Uh, political parties, uh, they had a lot of problems while working over this uh, document and while carrying out, uh, fulfilling these content and what they lack most of all. And we commend them strictly that they must improve and make more effective inter-party communication ties, relations within the party to itself for short and durable, short and long term periods. And besides, uh, one, they are really there spot under belly while, while carrying out and monitor the implementation of different various uh, articles of this document. They must just uh, put them into operation more frequently, and they must just improve this work. One more issue which we uh, just uh, treat as the negative side and as the shortcoming, lack of communication within the parties and among parties. You see, they do not communicate them, and especially concerning the perception of this document. They must exchange their ideas, how they perceive it. Uh, they must set up some platform. Let's call it intra-party council. And this intra-party permanently acting council must uh, take into consideration and uh, just uh, retrospection and uh, interpret and improve all shortcomings which exist in their inter-party relations. And now content, communication, media communication from the side of the parties. Yes, this component must transcend, and if it is transcend, it will encourage more, much more, the improvement and uh, refining of the uh, refining of uh, uh, the schedule of the work. Central Electoral Committee, which is one of the crucial players while making this code and uh, communicating concerning this uh, code, we decided. Uh, to make some recommendations. The first, first, uh, 
uh, it's very important for Central Electoral Committee, you see, to set up, to improve and to strengthen trust, mutual trust between and among parties. Here, the role is crucial, role of this uh, uh, committee, Electoral Central Committee, and it's uh, you know, crucial uh, participation, importance of its participation as the invigorator and instigator, improver of these relations. They must deliver information as much as it's possible to mass media, to our community during electoral, pre-electoral and uh, post-electoral uh, period. And also it must uh, invent mechanism in order to inform media sources, mass media, the facts dealing with uh, violations in order to make participants in the stream of the content of this uh, code. We have one very important participant. These are international partners, donors, and as my colleague said, uh, uh, they really uh, contributed a lot of to our work to making that code and it's better uh, but it will be better if they uh, uh, communicate parties much earlier before uh, elections and also also in order to encourage mass media to uh, launch adequate discussion and that they will save time because if they act in expedition beforehand they will have much more time for other tasks and for other challenges and besides uh, 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 this format must be supported and we need support of our international partners it will be very crucial by its importance that support and it will be nice if international community directly directly communicate with concrete parties and their leaders especially in order to make party more responsible while just assuming while perceiving and implementing this very important document the code of uh, ethics uh, and uh, by these by means of these uh, they will clarify parties leaders will clarify and perceive more more completely this document and they will be able to evaluate their violations if committed in a more careful and profound way and especially it's important to these participants and uh, mass media and uh, also yes time time limits time limits time and of course uh, uh, media sources international uh, participants they must be at their best in order to retain topicality to the code of behavior and thus they will will just benefit political parties electorate recommendations were finished and of course uh, we just summarize everything thanks a lot for your attention thank you thank you yes thanks Thanks for this information. Yes, really very well, well, very well. You have done uh, most of your times. Uh, recommendations are very, very interesting, especially concerning uh, to those organizations which work uh, uh, concerning the forthcoming development. Uh, and uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, uh, parties, uh, parties, uh, they act in a different way. 
their activity and their behavior varies in different political uh, formats and uh, so on. And dialect and its uh, platform, dialect, especially in the region on site, it's very important. It will be very good uh, springboard uh, for for the improvement of situation. And uh, risks are so high. There are enormously high things at stake, and parties cannot act in a different way. They fear sometimes to act in a different way. And therefore, and uh, you see, uh, it, political uh, parties, their arrangement, the ways of uh, financing, and so on, everything must be improved. So that's your recommendations. They are very promising. Your summing up is very, very promising because these parties, the new parties, pledging parties, they act better. They take to other ways, to other tools. Maybe it's the some dawn of political improvement, of uh, uh, political uh, reverse, renaissance, or something like this. And uh, I think uh, that's, in our opinion, parties, seasoned ones, won't have other way rather than to improve, to renew their activity, to take more reasonable, more sober, more fair and unwise tools. Uh, so, and uh, uh, John, John, thanks a lot for so fruitful participation of your own. What do you think about this study, about your this research, and what you will suggest as tools to improve everything? Floor is yours. You are welcome. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is everyone able to hear me? Okay. Not too much background noise. Okay. I, I'm I'm just going to go on and assume that that that, that everyone can. Uh, so thank you, Corneli, and, and and to our colleagues from from Georgian Institute of Politics for having me here today. Really, always delighted to join uh, on these important discussions, which I think are are ever evolving and uh, and ever improving. So the fact that we're doing so, I think, gives us sort of the uh, the, the the foundation and ground to to reflect on what's been done in the past, how we can improve upon it in the future, and where those opportunities and risks sort of lie. So. Um, to first answer the question, I think, uh, and I hope you'll all forgive me, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm currently at a political party, a, a multiple political party uh, uh, consultations as we speak that we're facilitating. Uh, we don't have a lot of time um, because uh, due to the political crisis, we're all rushing to get ready for yet another election. Uh, I'm very interested to see how that will go. But in any event, I was glad I could be here today and, and to, to follow uh, from first off the question that was posed, um, I think the research is terrific. Uh, I'll just start by saying that. I think it's, 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 it's incredibly important. We need to be, you know, data is, is our friend and at both qualitative and quantitative, and we need to be utilizing that data and collecting it, storing it, uh, institutionalizing sort of that memory from election cycle to election cycle. And that through that only are we able to, to really begin tracking trends over time. So whether we're talking about polling, whether we're talking about analyses of, of processes or, or, or even uh, such as this, the code of conduct, uh, this gives us a clear idea of where and how things are shifting, whether or not we see Georgia progressing or backsliding um, and, and in all of those, or perhaps just stagnant, right? Uh, so in all those ways, I think that this work is, is very important. Um, as you may know, my institution, uh, International Republican Institute, has been... Uh, to various degrees in the last 20 years involved in a number of, of code of conduct processes uh, across many elections. Um, and, and in that process, there hasn't always been the best monitoring of the code itself, right? Uh, and I think so this, this, this is an important step um, that Georgian Institute of Politics spearheaded. And I think we need to do more of this as we, as we enter into more sort of codes of conduct looking towards future elections. Based on the political environment, I think we can all agree whether it's uh, this year in 2022 or this year in 2024, we do have quite a few elections on the horizon. Um, so, so I'm very glad, was glad to receive this report and was delighted to read it. Uh, I definitely thought that it, uh, uh, it resonated well with 
many of the takeaways we have in our work, particularly working with political parties, working to help them develop issue-focused messaging and platforms, and more specifically, and not even to develop them, uh, but to campaign on them. Uh, I think one of our, our perhaps misconceptions or, or, or assumptions was always that, well, if they would just develop them, then that would be great and they'll have all the information they need to, you know, to essentially be armed with information to go out and speak to voters. And then we did that. And then we realized that many of them weren't, still weren't campaigning on them, right? They were still reverting back into to rhetoric, which contributes to um, what is a very polarized and highly charged political environment. Uh, and so it's not just enough to develop uh, th those, those sort of platforms and messages, um, but also ne the, the need to campaign on them and sort of uh, avoid the temptation shall we say, to get into that, that kind of what we'd call a rat race, uh, where every party is literally just uh, attacking one another. Uh, so, and I think, I think this type of research is important for evaluating that, and the code of conduct is one such way in which we can, we can sort of hold parties and political actors more accountable. To give a just, just a bit more uh, information on, on the process that was, in, you know, that was launched last year, um, our organization, IRI, uh, the Swiss government, uh, and, and, and uh, um, of course, the Central Election Commission worked together, I think, to collaboratively develop um, the, the, the language, the relationships, the process by which the code of conduct was, was instituted. Um, it was a collaborative development, and, and I would be very, uh, I would, in, in all cases, be incredibly supportive of, of, of collaborative development processes. Um, that was something we did last year when we developed the, the election compass with a number of our partners from, from the Stiftungs, from EECMD, uh, from some of the other research organizations in Georgia, uh, CRRC, uh, ISET, and, I, and, and was the same case, I think, with the Code of Conduct. Um, it's, it's useful and beneficial to do that for a number of reasons, but particularly to avoid any allegations of bias, to have a, a large sort of, uh, I don't want to say coalition, but, but group of diverse organizations engaged in a singular process um, allows sort of, I think, the widest uh, capacity to bring in all a diverse range of political actors. And that's really what we were after here, right? We wanted the largest number of, of political actors to sign and, and, and engage. Um, so it does allow us the ability to capitalize on and, and implement um, such a process with our domestic partners and with domestic institutions. Um, and that will, I think, on the whole, uh, ensure greater party buy-in. Um, so for us, of course, as I said, it's, it's, it's best if they're all signing. But of course, there are risks to this type of an approach as well. Uh, one of them, of course, is, is and, and I think this being one of the biggest, is the perception of bias by certain state institutions, right? Um, I won't get into, you know, it's, it's not my place to comment on, on the... the uh, uh, the neutrality or perception of neutrality um, of, let's say, for example, the Central Election Commission. But of course, we saw what happened after the election, and there certainly are members of the population and certain political actors who who believe, uh, who openly stated they believe that there's bias. So, you know, as we often say in politics, perception is reality, whether it's true or not. Um, so there is a need for impartial arbiters when you're engaging state institutions. Uh, when there is uh, uh, different opinions on whether certain institutions can or cannot be biased in the process. Um, and this is where I think it's been mentioned before, Nino, you were saying in your presentation, the, you know, the importance of international uh, organizations. Um, I would say sort of a double-edged sword. On, on one hand, we're happy to be involved. Uh, and I think our, our, our partners in the, Swiss, in the Swiss mission would also say the same um, to support the process, of course. But simultaneously, it's important to note that, that international organizations, um, there, there's a challenge and a risk to them being the only ones managing such a process, right? Because it sets a dangerous precedent. Um, and I think that precedent was, was made very clear in sort of the, the recent political crisis and boycott, um, where there's been a number of um, uh, statements and, and, and rhetoric that has pointed to uh, over reliance on the international community to uh, to to come in and work on certain situations, right? Always stronger, better, uh, more impactful if it's managed and and uh, and and uh, overseen or implemented by by 
by Georgian organizations. So, um, you know, I would I would caution always, uh, or I would urge caution when when involving international organizations because we're happy to help, but simultaneously, our best work is done if we're supporting Georgian institutions and organizations to. Um, to and, and that I think is especially true with the code of conduct. Um, lastly, I think one of the risks you know, parties, political party, um, we have to think about what their intentions are. Uh, many of them sign in this last round. I think all the major political parties, uh, or close to all the, the, the major political parties, did sign the code of conduct, which was great. We were really delighted that they did. Um, but they don't always honor uh, that, and and so we have to be mindful of the fact that they that they may not, um, and 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 sort of uh, enter sort of as they say with our eyes open, but that opens an opportunity as well, um, and I think the first one, and I, I do believe this will be more uh, pursued over the coming years and elections, pertains to observation, um, observation by domestic organizations like Georgian Institute of Politics and other. Um, research think tank, uh, 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 civil society organizations, also the observation by international missions. Uh, when we talk about election observation, you know, for so many years, I think the approach has been, let's observe the technical process. And that, and that is, of course, the main goal of most observation missions. But we're also recognizing with sort of the emergence of, uh, of uh, analysis surrounding the rhetoric um, for better or for worse, in elections and in, in the election process, especially in Georgia, there's an opportunity to say, well, we can also be analyzing the rhetoric of, of political actors, and we can be analyzing um, and, and observing whether or not they are adhering to the terms set out in, in a code of conduct or a code of ethics. So that does pose an opportunity uh, when parties don't honor certain elements um, to, to hold them accountable and to document that and, 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 and ensure that we're collecting that information. Um, as I, I kind of said before, and not to be the broken record, but developing that data, uh, tracking it across multiple elections, you know, that again is, is a great opportunity for us to, to assess the degree to which uh, any country, but in this case, Georgia is progressing in terms of its democratic trajectory. Um, so data is good. We want to have that. And, I, and I'd love to see more of these reports sort of being developed continually from election to election. Um, lastly, and I think, um, I don't know that I'll say most importantly, but, uh, but monitoring um, the capacity to monitor uh, codes of conduct as well as party platforms, uh, election rhetoric, campaign environment, uh, inclusion of certain groups. Um, it only improves our ability as organizations who are engaged in the process to, uh, to determine where Georgia is, to determine where any country is, uh, insofar as they're uh, they're managing the electoral process. So, I'm 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 very supportive of this. Um, we look forward to the the opportunity to to again engage in this coming election and future elections, and of course would would welcome the opportunity to work with uh, even more organizations than last time. I think it's 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 in all of our interest to. Um, to hold leadership accountable. And if we're, if we're quite serious about the notion that, that the system needs new ideas uh, and, and, and needs to uh, regularly improve in terms of how political actors engage, that only happens when citizens and civil society groups are all working together to hold them accountable. So um, look forward to any questions and of course to this continued process as we uh, navigate some very uh, difficult and challenging waters. Thank you. Thank you, John, for this very good, very reasonable comment, uh, of course, uh, and uh, what, what, for instance, deals with the activity of the supporters on the one hand, it's very highly valuable uh, encouragement in this political uh, progress uh, process, sorry, and uh, at the same time, you see, it, it, it must uh, be stressed that it won't Want to this process won't be a sort of kitchen cuisine of the modern Georgian politicians in order to avoid them to turn it its own private affair, its their own estate 
and therefore, therefore, initiatives, international initiatives, uh, are highly appreciated. For instance, uh, we highly appreciate and we appeal uh, political parties to act in keeping with the gender equality, and they, I'm sure, they, they never, never uh, just spent one petri for this issue, but in spite of, in spite of uh, this topic is in progress, because we view and we are witnessing change in mentality, change in activity, change in behavior, change in, uh, for instance, various heritages, and so on. We have 20 minutes, and 20 minutes will be allocated to questions. One, one person who has several questions, and we give them opportunity to ask and to say to whom this question is addressed. Then we have several, again, questions, and then after questions, we and after answers, we shall finish. First question. Hello. 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 Everybody hears me. I'm Lavanka Fishwili. Lavanka Fishwili, and I want to ask Givi, first of all, and maybe Nico, too. Uh, three questions. Concerning of methodology, Givi already said this quotation of the speeches took place uh, from the three points of views, non-content, partially content, and completely embracing content. So the biggest amount of these speeches, um, how you put watershed from methodological point of view, which speech, which speech covers problem completely and which speech covers problem partly. Another question. Again, this deal with the conclusion, final conclusion, you know, that uh, in last 10 days, last 10 days, in before pre pre electoral period, the top shows, uh, actually, they do not deal with the political problem. And presenting from our talk shows, we know everybody what they are. Why we wait? Why we wait that they will shed Russia profoundly on political problems? And in so far, uh, it will be really effective to learn this out. And third question, third question. If you have data, or if you already handled, uh, handled study, what takes place in this field in democratic countries where the preelectoral fever is very high? In so far, those countries, democratic countries, uh, they deal with in their talk shows uh, uh, political problems. So you address it, Gigi and me, no. So we shall disseminate your questions among others. First was from anonymous. This ethical issue, polarization, insult, rough treatment. Maybe it's a, yes, maybe it's a very, very concise, you see? very predetermined uh, strategy of electoral campaign. And Matthias at the there was there a precedent that parties, parties, parties took responsibility on uh, the violation of ethical norms from the side of their party members? You know, no, no. No, no, Givi, Givi is the main answer point. Givi Salome, first, please. Givi and Salome. Thank you. Thank you. I shall try. 
I shall try my best to, first of all, first of all, this methodology, we must uh, uh, consider within the frame of the signature and signing of this document. So it was signed in order to clarify how parties carried out the first provisions of the first article, and uh, first sub articles that we respect and so on, we want to, etc., etc. So, methodologically, maybe it's not very clear what the difference between various sections. Although, if we, it proceeds from the pilot version when we decided to do it, we tested pilot version. We proceeded from what we were faced by. First channel, discussions were their main form. If they were uh, limited from the uh, time uh, factor, although they were formats where, for instance, formula TV program, TV channel, uh, program Georgia elects. They invited parties and they were contending, they were discussing with very, very reasonable content. But it's difficult to say which one just dealt with directly with content. And therefore, therefore, we uh, just invented. Yes, invented this partly content, partly content. Also, we take those, took this into consideration. The various analysts which we codified, we just uh, selected them in random and uh, uh, compared the percentage of coincidences. Eight from ten monitors, they interpret similarly. Was it completely dealing with content or partly dealt with content? This is from my side. You know, maybe you will add something. Actually, uh, yes, content from methodological point of view. I cannot add something. Third one, third question, that, yes, we did not uh, compare our work or results or pre-electoral uh, methodology with international samples or international experience. Uh, so uh, that's, So I personally, I had known this experience, and so, and therefore, I, I won't cover over like DV, and maybe I shall answer more the next two questions because uh, I, I I can't say more. Well, yes, briefly, just in a nutshell. Very, 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 very shortly, very briefly. So, first dealt with yes, is it the part of political competition or part of culture, political culture? And we, within that component, we communicated to political parties in so far they assume this, how they perceive this code, its implementation. And here, when they say, like parties themselves says that aggressive strategies, three letter words, accusation, incrimination, and so on, proceed from that very structure, which is made by, which are made by dominant factors. And therefore, um, you see, and uh, they fear if they take to more reasonable more polite, more uh, disciplined schedule or uh, just working techniques, 
they will be sunk. Political cultural war, uh, electorate. Of course, it varies. There is no assumption, there is no perception that uh, our voters, they, against the background of their political culture, they demand for more radical campaign, more refined campaign, and so on. No. We here can speak about political culture of our voters. So both components are important. Second question. Second question. Uh, yes. Second question. Here. Uh, it was uh, spoken about responsibility. From the point of view of monitoring, uh, parties are acting so poorly and tools and measures which they take are so weak and poor that they are not able to react on these or those violations which already had taken place and and political party representatives themselves they very rarely assume and evaluate violations as violations they disdain them yes they disdain them and uh, uh, they do not care and of course about responsibility we maybe we shall speak much more later but not today not now this i wanted to say solomon you're welcome yes i add what they talk about yes he spoke about uh, content yes you see component of subjectivity and i uh, i appreciate no i i evaluated the uh, presentation and what my private experience just can say yes i was interested i clarified in so far speaker involved in the depth of the topic in so far he proposed uh, tools to solve the problem and if he avoids this or if he did not finish for me this was the main main referential point and the first anonymous question i want to answer in the following way because georgia is not expression exception Yes, yes, uh, of course, not only in Georgia, violation and uh, some harsh treatment uh, dominate in communication, but, and it was asked, is harsh treatment, the three letter word, the part of strategy of political communication, but this non-ethical phrase, three letter words, they won't, be won't be won't be it's necessary they must be root out rooted out from political lexicon and political campaigns yes non-ethical approach it's very broad still but it has no place while political campaigns while electoral campaigns they must be rooted out thank you yes regrettably regrettably this took place, this takes, yes, this took place. Thank you very much, Solomon. Now, yes, yes, very, very briefly. Briefly, the last question. Yes, such thing to never was uh, noticed by, by our monitoring that political parties, uh, they took responsibility for the ethical uh, violations of their uh, representatives. Also, the you know, focal point of our monitoring uh, was uh, more set for a field which um, shed washer on uh, electoral violations at the pressing to electoral stations and so on although we have some examples some samples when uh, some uh, physical controversy so something like hand-to-hand -hand fighting something like 
hand-to-hand -hand fighting took place. And uh, so, and uh, one, it was, it was a launch and it was uh, instigated by one side. Thank you very much. Thanks to uh, everybody, all participants, all speakers, the uh, Institute of Georgian Politics. Thanks a lot to our supporters, foreign colleagues, and what we may say. Maybe if we, if we have more frequent such meetings, it will be better because it will uh, clarify our uh, possibility to shed more lustre uh, on negative or positive sides. And also it will be to, to just improve and clean, clean out, to clean, to clean, uh, to, to improve shortcomings to strengthen in the swim how our political life looks like from the point of view of this ethical code of course it is not just a breakthrough by means of one setting and uh, we are in a very complex condition and of course uh, parties they have responsibility, they are obliged to change political dynamics, to turn to more uh, stable political rails, political tools, and we citizens, electorate, we must require in a stricter way just, just, just to prevent and debar parties who use three-letter words from uh, MP mandates and to give green way and open streets to those ones who are acting in accordance with the code and we can uh, just uh, treat it as the first step at the dawn of our activity and to wish them success so and along with them we uh, we we want to say wish success success to all participants, it was a pleasure to listen to you and uh, thanks to Institute and all of you and look forward to uh, meet you again. Uh, thanks, Lavan, for this very interesting discussion. And I think that uh, my, uh, my, my impression was uh, following one that in this uh, report, there are numerous interesting facts uh, and I'm sure that you know, such discussions, uh, they will encourage and uh, will be very good help to our politicians, our parties, our politics, and uh, and uh, uh, as much as we set up high top grade and top rate documents, uh, our uh, civil society, our politics, uh, political parties will benefit more. Of course, we won't, and it was it is impossible to root out complete liberalization. We won't do it. It's impossible, but we must try to decrease it. And thanks again, and hopes are expressed to meet you here again. Thanks a lot to everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks a lot again.